Hi, this is Mark Morrell from Toon Barn. We're here at the 50th anniversary of San Diego Comic-Con. It's amazing, isn't it? 50 years. I think it started with seven or eight people in their comic books. Not bad. Right, and now we're talking about the 20th anniversary of Batman Beyond with Will Friedle, who played Terry McGinnis. Yeah, 20 years. I can't, people have been telling me that, and it's just, it's amazing how fast time goes. I remember this like it was yesterday, and uh, man, I was, what, 21, 22 when we did this, so... God, I can't believe it's been 20 years already. So we were just talking about a previous role you had. You were one of the few people who've actually played like a Robin character and a Batman character. Yeah, I've been very lucky. I've done. Uh, I've been Nightwing. I've been Red Robin, and I've been Terry. So yeah, I've uh, got to kind of jump the, the the shark a little bit. I've, I've been everybody but Bruce, I think, at this point. So I'm glad I didn't have to be, uh, which is great. Those are tough shoes to fill. So it's fun to be able to step in and do what I can. Do you remember what the fan reaction was when Batman Beyond first came out? What was it like? Uh, I, the thing that I remember the most was everybody was very skeptical bef before the show started. You know, it was kind of, oh, are they aging it down? Is it going to be cartoony? You know, you're just coming off of Batman the Animated Series, which is arguably the greatest animated show of all time. So to then say, now we're going to make a teenage Batman, which is kind of how they were touting it, uh, there were a lot of people very skeptical. And by the end of the pilot episode, everybody kind of went, okay, I'm in. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, we got to tell everybody the uh, the Blu-ray for the full series yes. of Batman Beyond is coming out on October 29th, but it'll be out on digital on October 15th. It is, and they've uh, digitally remastered most of the episodes. Some of them they've they've had to uh, to really to mess with because it's been a while. They look phenomenally good. They sound amazing, uh, and the show's great. So it's always fun to revisit. Thank you for joining us on Toon Barn at San Diego Comic Con. Thanks for having me again. I appreciate it. Hi, this is Mark Murrow from Toon Barn. We're here at New York Comic Con 2019. We're talking about Batman Beyond's 20th anniversary once again with Will Friedle. Hello. How you doing? I'm good. How are you? <laughs> so we didn't get to talk to you the last time about the fact that you were doing both shows at the same time, mm -hmm. your live action show and your animated show. Were you encouraged by somebody to get into the animated show at that time? Uh, no. I mean, it really wasn't about that. It was, it was more or less... Uh, like in, uh, you know, most places in, in town, you get a call from your agent saying there's uh you know, they're auditioning for this show and they'd like you specifically to come in. And I'd never done voiceover before and to play Batman and to do it with the same cast. And it's like, there was no way I was going to get this show. No way. Um, so I went, sure, I'll, go, I'll give it a shot. And, uh, you know, just got really, really, really lucky. Yeah. Yeah. So if I say the name Derek Powers, what does Terry McGinnis react? How does he react when, when he hears the name Derek Powers? What you, what I do, they never really kind of finished where, what happened with Powers. He kind of disappeared, but he never really went away. So I think he'd just go, Powers, because you just don't know. Do you think it would have been cool that Batman Beyond's Batman would have gotten a similar type lifelong villain like the Joker was, was with the original Batman? Yeah, I think, you know, you never know if, if maybe that's what they'd plan to do if we do another film, uh, which would be great. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it's it's... I think that's how they were kind of setting it up originally. But then it became one of those things where he... Um, you know, it, w they liked bringing new villains in each episode. Yeah. And they were villains that they were got to create out of whole cloth. Right. So it wasn't, you know, uh, Bruce would always say, I don't want to do Joker Beyond. I don't want to do Mr. Freeze Beyond. I don't want to do Bane Beyond. Uh, you know, so you get flashes of these kind of villains at certain places. But for the most part, they liked to keep them moving. And they had great, you know, like Curare was an awesome uh, uh, villain. And Ink was an awesome villain. Yes. So those things being created just for Beyond, I think they liked to kind of throw them in as often as they can. But the one lifelong kind of villain I think would have been cool too and I guess it would be Powers because I mean he ordered the death of his dad and and uh, Terry already took out Mr. Fix so he took out the man who actually carried it out so but the man who ordered it might still be out there and and you know nuclear so that could be fun okay well I want to thank you for joining us on Toon Barn once again thanks for having me again I appreciate it you know him from Boy Meets World you know him from Kim Possible he is Terry McGinnis Will Friedel How was that relationship in the booth for you two? Oh, don't, don't touch me. <laughs> <laughs> I, had to, I had to keep them separate. No, he's, see them next he's a good guy. Yeah. It was, it, it, that was the thing that was so strange about doing Beyond was the show, the, the, the relationship between Terry and Bruce in a much less violent way mirrored the relationship that Kevin and I had. 
Huh? Yeah. <laughs> Not much less violent, though. Thank you. Um, I had never done an animated series. It's my first animated series ever. So uh, I was. They, they said, "Hey, you know, you're going to go in there, and you know, Bruce Tim and, and all these amazing men and women are creating it. Andrea Romano's directing it. Kevin Connors playing Batman. Good luck." Uh, and so I'm sitting next to Kevin Conroy, and it's like, "Okay, go." And I, at first, I had no idea what to do. I mean, literally sitting slouched in front of the microphone, and Kevin's going, "All right." Well, shoulders back and it, so I mean he, he, he mentored me in the voiceover world like uh, uh, Bruce mentored Terry so there were ways where it, it, it did kind of mirror itself which I thought was was very interesting and we recorded most of them together we did um, in the vast majority of them we were we were in the booth together so it was uh, yeah it was a cool way to go I think we mostly had ensemble yeah, yeah we, we did. had almost everybody in the room was... incredible guest oh man incredible you never knew who was going to be in there it's like showing up to Comic Con and somebody goes Tom Cruise and you go what <laughs> Walk by Schwarzenegger coming in. It was crazy. Yeah, it, was it was crazy like, back there. Yeah. We're here for Batman Beyond. Yeah, it was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> was it um, Out of the Past? Where oh, yeah. you become young again? So it was really cool for me because it was like then Terry and Bruce were fighting and you were back to kind oh, of that's original right. voice. That's right. So I was such a Batman the Animated Series fan that I kind of sat there most of that episode like this. Like... <laughs> which was great, which was all of Return of the Joker between him and Mark Hamill just sat there like this for two weeks. It's like, oh my god. But that was cool because it was like we got to, you know, I got to fight, Terry got to fight with oh. young Bruce. But then again in Epilogue, then you went even older. So at that point, I think Bruce Wayne was like 138 years old. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And it was one of those things where that was then really cool. Where it's just good. So, so you had like kind of the dimensions the entire way, which was which was very cool to watch. But yeah. And then there was a scene in um, the call where you had old Bruce Wayne talking to older Superman, who still sounded the same. Who still sounded the same? Yeah. Which so that kind of contrast is also really really cool because I think one of the first lines you say is he comes in and he's Superman and he goes, "Hey Bruce, how you holding up?" And you just went with a cane. <laughs> And it was that great kind of connection between the two of them, which I, I'll never forget that scene. It was awesome. Yeah, it's cool. I did. I had the best teachers in town. Like, amazing. The, the people that, you know, you're... Because people were like, hey, what was Thank it you. like? Well, it's true. <laughs> <laughs> Is it, but they were like, what, were you nervous going in and, you know, sitting in between Kevin Conroy and Mark Hamill for Return of the Joker? I'm like, nah, totally normal Wednesday. <laughs> Of course I was nervous. It was horrifying. It was a, yeah, so that was, it was great to be able to see you've got all the vets kind of around you, and it's like, oh, that's what you do. So you know what? Put them at ease, because you picked up right away that you were the through line. Yeah, I knew it was show. my show. It was your show. <laughs> hey, 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 wait a minute. Uh, no, I was, it was one of those wait things. Wait a minute. We, we still joke that I'm to this day convinced that I'm going to get one of the box sets, maybe if I can find a way to buy one. And, um... <laughs> I'm going to turn it on and it's going to be somebody else. Like, I've finally been recast. <laughs> um, so I'm yeah. still not comfortable that I'm part of the cast. And it was, yeah, the whole thing was just, yeah, it was have, amazing. Have you ever heard Robert Pattinson in the... Uh... <laughs> See? Ooh. He's quite, he does a wonderful Will Friedle impression. I, I've, I've, been, I've been told. I've been told. And I glitter in the sunlight, so... <laughs> I think we're good. seen anyone. <laughs>